Dear viewer, tis Uncle Johnny here again, uh, drinking another beer with you, and uh, let's see what we get from this one. It's another one from Beer 52, slightly older this one. It is from uh, the Beer on Trend magazine. And as usual, um, I think this was the first edition that didn't have the tasting notes in, which is oh, just, yeah, not good at all. But what we did get was we got this nice article um, uh, from Adrian Turney Jones, the great craft beer schism, dun dun dun, um, which is basically about uh, old beer supporters, uh, camera for example, versus um, the really really new style craft beer type people, um, and how there's this big gap, and there shouldn't be because everyone that loves beer should feel free to love their beer. Um, and this one that's quite an interesting one um, because it is London Porter, uh, but it's done by um, Bureau. Is it Bureau or Bureau? Um, should say on here. Where is it? Down here. Bureau. But it's brewed in St. Ives. Because Bureau or Bureau. Um, as we all know, we're a German brewery. So theoretically, I think a lot of the beers that Beer 52 do aren't actually brewed at the brewery or are done by gypsy brewers and that kind of stuff. A lot of them are brewed, contract brewed, should I say, over here. Um, I always like their, uh, their cans, though, their designs. Absolutely ridiculous, man. Um, and this one's made with Fuggle Hops. Um, I have tasted, uh, sorry, I have viewed the tasting notes online um, and it says uh, East Kent Goldings, but on the can definitely says Fuggles, whoops, over here, um, and it's 4% ABV. It's got the frog, which is one of the things that uh, Bureau, 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 I'll get it right eventually, has, but a lot of London sort of landmarks, even a little thing that says Cheers. I think that's really, really cool. So let's see if we can get what it says about it. So it says London Porter takes its name from the porters who carried goods around the streets of London in the 18th century. Um, this beer is brewed using uh, pale crystal brown and chocolate malts combined with fuggle hops to give a rich and dark and complex flavour. Sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, the only downside is um, that is 4%. And um, porters, London porters especially, um, were stronger beers. Um, they're about sort of 6.5% to 7% ABV. Um, traditionally they were. And then what they used to do, because breweries are a little bit sneaky. Oh, the other thing about porters, and specifically London porter, um, is it was one of the first beers that was actually aged in the brewery. So it cost more money because they had to do a bit of storage and, uh, and all of that kind of jazz. Um, but what I, uh, the canny people uh, in London used to do uh, was get mild, uh, which is obviously a weaker beer, and then mix it with some of their aged beer, and they call that porter. They're not strictly uh, a brewery-made porter, but hey, they just mix drinks and uh, yeah, why the hell not? We have got a lovely black top, but alas, a silver can uh, just with the label on it. But I like the black tops. I think, I think it's cool. I want someone to produce a pure black can, uh, black all over, including the bottom. I've never seen a, a beer can that's 100% blackout can. Uh, for me, that would be pretty good. Anyway, I've had this in the fridge because I've had this beer a while and I'm going to pressure test it because I don't want this one to explode everywhere. Oh, it is a bit lively. There are some bubbles coming out of the top. So just need to be careful with this one. And that also implies that I'm going to get uh, some bubbles in the pour. So well, let's get this into a can if I can carefully open this bad boy and it hasn't exploded everywhere which is always a good sign like there you go but filled 
still pretty much to the brim. Uh, got a glass here, a little bit dirty because I got this ridiculous cold and I still have. I apologise to you, dear viewer. Um, it does mean that, uh, yeah, my nose is kind of a bit blocked up. And I've been using my, one of my beer drinking glasses. This is this is one of the ones um, from vitamin C capsules, which um, I always find really help uh, you get over a cold. So my, I think my uh, if I remember, my dad used to say cold will last nine days, three days coming, three days you feel absolutely rubbish, and then three days going. Um, and it's been kind of over seven for me so far. Right, let us get this bad boy into a glass. Oh, it is boring, fizzy. It's going to be another one of these, isn't it? I think I might have to do two shots on this bad boy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dear viewer, dear viewer, what happens when you when you leave your uh, your cans of beer for like four or five months you get ridiculous heads like this anyway you know how we do it uh, i'm going to click my fingers and as if by magic the shop keeper appeared wow happen again it's like pure magic isn't it there's a uh, full glass we still have a good two three fingers well we don't have a look in there, dear viewer. It looks like the head's all the way up to the top, but it's kind of flattened like a, I don't know, like a meringue has kind of fallen in on itself. And your meringues should never fall in. They should stay up, stay puffed, <laughs> stay pert or whatever. So we'll call that a two, two finger, two and a half. But it was a fist head, wasn't it, to start with? absolutely ridiculous and um i was checking um this beer i don't know if you can see that it's still in date so even though i've had it for a while april next year it says and uh to have that just that's not right is it it's there's something gone wrong um maybe it's my fault for not drinking drink fresh that's what they usually say however for darker beers, porter stouts, etc., aging them a little bit, and okay, it's in a can, so it's not proper aging, um, is supposed to do wonders for the beer. But not in this case. And it was in the fridge. If this wasn't in the fridge, it would have definitely exploded all over me, and I would not been happy with you, Beer 52, because I think it's your fault. I think you've contracted this out. So, um, St. Ives Brewery, mm, yeah, you're partly to blame too. But please remember, um, some people don't drink their beers straight away. There's a local brewery. Uh, see if I've got a thing here. I was talking to my my pals down at the um, down at the camera. Uh, these guys, Moot Brewery, who are a little bit hit or miss. I've had some really good beers from them, and I've also had some dodgy ones. Uh, but they've done a new line of Rattler beers with orange. I know Rattler's usually uh, lemon or lime, isn't it? Um, but they've done it with orange, and I believe they put some orange sort of pulp or pieces or whatever it was into the beer. And they've had some real problems with cans re-fermenting in the can and exploding. Um, the person I spoke to, the, the bottom of their can, this divot, had actually come out. It was like an outie. It wasn't an innie anymore. Ridiculous. Anyway, dear viewer, dear viewer, I've gone off topic like I usually do. That's purely, purely artistic license. So a reminder, we're doing the London Porter, uh, supposedly from Bureau. Uh, Brugri, um, Veer St. Ives. Lovely, lovely colour off. I'd say that's a conquer colour. It's not black. It's definitely conquer. Look at that. I love, I love it. <laughs> Look at that massive big line at the top. And there's even another line there. And I haven't even started drinking yet. 
Anyway, uh, if you've liked what you've seen so far in this video, why not click like, subscribe, join the Uncle John Arami. We'll drink beer together. Cheers and beers. Nice. So, quite a lot going on in there. Um, there's obviously some chocolate in there, chocolate malt, I should say. And it's giving it that kind of bitter, uh, but also that kind of sweet chocolate thing going on. There is a bit of sweetness. There's a bit of coffee there too. Um, but, alas, as I thought would happen, this is a 4% beer. Had this been a six or a six and a half percent beer, I think there'd be more body, there'd be more taste, maybe a little bit of creaminess, especially if you added uh, a tiny sprinkle of uh, oat perhaps in there. Um, as it is, it, it just falls down a tiny bit kind of weak and watery, a little bit, if that makes sense. The flavours and the taste, the good stuff, about porters and stouts definitely in this beer but it's just watered down too much this beer should not be a four percent beer um otherwise everything else is nice about it i should have sniffed but my nose is still flued up or colded up man flu dreadful yeah on the nose and like i say not working in full working order. Um, just getting a kind of generic bitterness, really. Um, maybe a hint of coffee. Uh, but if you like the dark malts, you can pick them apart here. That's, I suppose that's the good thing about having, having a watery beer, is you can um, really put aside things um, and, and highlight individual flavours. With a stronger beer, it might be more difficult to uh, to pull apart. Um, yes, and the other thing that's in there is that fuggle spiciness, which is always good in autumn time. So this is a good water, uh, water down winter warmer, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, dark, spicy, some earthy tones as well. The coffee's there, the kind of bitter chocolate's there. Hardly any alcohol that I can taste. Um, doesn't have that alcohol kind of thing on the breath. It's not there at all. Um, tastes a bit watery. The aftertaste is kind of there with earthy tones, some bitter chocolate. Not creaminess. I'd, I'd, I'd actually prefer it if there was a little bit of creaminess in there too. But yeah, I think they've made. I think they've done a mistake making it four percent. I really do. Otherwise, that is actually quite a nice tasting London porter. That's what it's supposed to be. But yeah, like I say. Yeah, it just needs to be some more. Nice lacing <laughs> from the very beginning. Look, it's still stuck on the top. That's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Guys, this has been Uncle Jonah drinking some London Porter. I'll say it once again so you guys don't have to. Like this cheeky chappy here, uh, I'm going to be saying cheers and beers to you all. We'll be back for more beer reviews real soon.